So I had started talking with Adam about um, problem six in A3, I guess it is. And uh, the, uh, I guess you guys had two questions. I guess Aaron and, uh, and Kat were working on this. So one question was, in part B, are you using the same function as part A? And the answer is no, because here it says, explain why the following all equality always holds for any function f. So that's the answer for that one. So this is always, this thing down here is always going to be true oh. for any function. And you need to explain why. All right, and then part D, the question was part D sounds a lot like part B. So what's the difference? Like part, C. Part, C. Oh, part C is like part D. Okay. All right, now. Part D says, note that sigma hat jk can be written as a transposition composed with sigma. All right. Now, what you have to prove in part D is that not only if you, so in fact, you could replace this here, you could replace this sigma hat 1, 2 with tau 1, 2 composed sigma. All right, you could replace this sigma hat 1, 2 with tau 1, 2 composed sigma of m. Now, part D says that, in fact, if you replace that tau 1, 2 with any permutation, any permutation rho, it's still true. So not just for transpositions, but for any type of permutation whatsoever. If I take a... If I sum over all permutations sigma, and I take this, this function of, of sigma of m, but then I compose it with another permutation, that's not going to change the result. All right, and the other, there was another question that uh, Adam and I were talking about uh, that, uh, let's see, what, what, what number was that? That was number nine, right? Yeah. All right, so for number nine, it says, suppose that row m of a square matrix, big M, is a linear combination of two other rows. And here's the explicit linear combination. And it says, write big M as a product of elementary matrices times a matrix that has zero rows. Okay. Now, two, two things to notice here. Uh, one is that uh, he said that, that some people were trying to use three by three matrices. This should be true for any matrix. The other thing is that elementary matrices, I'm getting a lot of background noise from somebody. Okay, now I'm not, so whoever did it was has, uh, taking care of it. Okay, so, uh, so for elementary matrices times a matrix that has a zero row. So you need to specify these matrices in such a way that if uh, you gave me a big M and this specification, then I could create these matrices. Now, how do you specify elementary matrices? Well, if you go back a little bit, the way to specify elementary matrices are just like this. Eij is switch rows i and j. Ri of lambda is multiply row i by lambda. And Sij of mu means uh, multiply, I forget which one it is, multiply row i by mu and add it to j, or multiply row g j by mu and add it to i. I don't remember which. You can look it up. But in this problem 9, you should be able to give me elementary matrices in this form. For instance, it might be uh, ejk times rk uh, parenthesis a, something like that. So you should be able to specify those elementary matrices very exactly in terms of this notation. And then for the matrix, the matrix M, the, the matrix that has zero row, you should tell me exactly which row is zero and how you create it from M. So is that clear? Whoops, sorry. All right, now somehow everybody, somebody.
Well, you have to start with a matrix that has a zero row. All right, so let's start with that. What? So, so we have to start with a matrix that has a zero row. Uh, which row? All right. Now, uh, Adam told me that Aaron, that you you did a three by three example, or something like that. Yeah. All right. So, what was your three by three example? Oh, okay. So, so um, I had like a three by three on the top row was A, A, C, the second row was C, F, okay. the third row was zero, 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 and then it gets to elementary. All right, now what, what relation does that matrix have with M? Here, let me. Okay. I, I was setting that one equal to like A and then showing the two different elements and then each of them ended up uh, producing M, where M had the bottom row as something like All right. C plus D. I, I don't have that example on me. It's, it's okay. All right, well, let's go. Let's look at this then. Uh, well, the row reduced form of M. Uh, well, that's that's a thought. Uh, let's let's see what we can do with this. So let's start with M here. So this is good. Let's work through some thought process here, and hopefully, yes. Oh, good. We're in business. Okay, M is equal to, and let's let's see his notation. M one one up to M1N. Whoops, I think this is this is a uh, first row nth column and then this would go all the way down to M. This is the nth row first column down to M nth row nth column. And let me just specify here somewhere in here you have which row is the which row is the oh the, it's the mth row that is not that is zero, I believe. Uh, unfortunately, that's not very good notation, but you'll just have to live with it. Um, m, m1 to m, mn. Okay. So this row here, this row here, this is this is row m, right? And that's equal to alpha, that's equal to A times rho, was it I and J? I think so. No, it's rho J plus um, rho K. Okay, okay, right. All right. So this is M, and you want to write M as, as a product of matrices. And I'm not sure, I, don't, I'm, I didn't specify how many elementary matrices, but we'll just say E1, E2. And I don't know, we'll go up to EQ, something like that. Times some other matrix, times some other matrix, let me call it um, M, M twiddle, where these are elementary matrices. And then this matrix has a zero row. All All right. So what you want to do is you, you want to, uh, basically you want to construct this matrix M from a matrix that has a zero row and then do row operations on that matrix with a zero row and, get, and that will get you big M. Now, uh, I guess it was Christy said that, let's talk, talk about the row reduction of M. That's, that's, uh, Oh, that's an awful lot of elementary matrices. And uh, we don't really have a lot of information about how to row reduce M. 
So let's try to think of something a little bit easier. M is this, well, you can't assume, the only thing you can assume about big M is it has one zero row. I mean, uh, that has one row that's a linear combination of the other two, of two others. Right. All right, let's, 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 uh, all right, so if you have trouble with this, then let's go and do some numbers, okay? So we'll do some numbers. So one, two, three, seven, twelve, five. And then here, I guess I'll just have this, I'll, this will be eight, uh, 14, eight. Right. So if you can see, the last row is the sum of the first two. All right. I suppose another way of doing this, another way to do this would be uh, start start with M and create a matrix with a zero row, and then work it backwards. So if this is M, can you get a series of, get a sequence of elementary row operations that turns this M into a matrix with a zero row? Okay, so what would that be? Okay. 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 Very good. So you're saying this this elementary matrix, and this would be, uh, what did you say? Minus minus one zero one. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. All right. That's the elementary matrix. All right. So if. All right. So this is e one, and then this is e two. That's equal to. A one zero zero, and then I think this what you said was zero one zero zero minus one one. Yes. All right. So what you're saying is, if I take e one times m, that's going to give me. Well, what that's going to do is is this is subtracts row one from row three. All right. That's going to subtract row one from row three. So that's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 7, 12, 5 for the first two. But then if I subtract row 1 from row 3, I'm going to get another 7, 12, 5. Okay. And then you say, OK, if I take E2 on that, I'm going to get uh, 1, 2, 3, 7, 12, 5. And then here you, you're actually subtracting row two from row three, so I'm going to get zero, zero, zero. Okay, very good. So you have E1 times E2 times M has a zero row. Okay. Okay, so I can say E2 times E1 times M is equal to M twiddle. Right? Right? But I want M as a product of I want M as a product of elementary matrices, let's just say E A, E B, et cetera, E K times M times M twiddle. What I have is M twiddle as a product of elementary matrices times M, but what I want is M as a product of elementary matrices times M twiddle. What am I gonna do? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sheena. Sorry, can I just do the inverse? Sure. Sure. So here I have m equal what? Okay. Okay. All right, that's good. Now I've uh, got to go one step further. Because what you want is m as a product of elementary matrices times m twiddle. Very, very good. All right, you knew how to reverse the, okay. 
All right, so here we have M now. This, this actually meets exactly my conditions, right? Because here I have an elementary matrix. We know that the inverse of an elementary matrix is also an elementary matrix. So these two are elementary matrix. And then this is a matrix with a zero row. Right? So this, in fact, exactly meets my criterion. I said product of elementary matrices, plural, times a matrix with a zero row. I didn't specify how many. Right? Uh, this turned out to be two. It might, in general, might turn out to be 15. I don't know. All right, now let's go one step further. Here you wrote E1, E2. It's not very descriptive and not very general. There's a notation for, for these two elementary matrices. There is a notation. Instead of E1, I should call this something. If we go back here, the notation for elementary matrices is somewhere up here. It's S something. Yes, it's S. It's the SIJ thing. Or is, is it the S? Yeah. So which is it? Yeah, but um, all right. So in particular, in particular, how would we write that first one? I don't remember. Whoops, I'm going down. I should be going up. Sorry. No wonder it didn't seem to be going the right way. All right. Uh, now, uh, the S notation has uh, uh, two, row, two row indices and a constant, I believe. Should be almost there. All right, here we go. All right, so here's the notation. Sij mu is i with mu in position ij. So if it's in position ij, it's row i, column j. So is that going to uh, multiply? I, I believe that's going to take row i, multiply it by mu, and add it to column j. I think that's what it does. So Sij of mu takes rho i, multiplies by mu, and gives me j. It takes rho i, multiplies by mu, and gives me j. So this e well, mu is a number. Mu can be negative. All right, but that would multiply. That would add one to. That would add negative one times the rho one and add it to rho one. Yes, I think that's correct. So I, I believe, you can double check this, but I believe that this is S13, negative 1. Correct. But now, that specific is a 3 by 3. If we could we do it S1, so that it's appropriate for matrices of all sides? Well, absolutely. Now, what you want to do is generalize this to your particular case, right? That's way easier than what I did. Well, I think that what that um, this kind of shows a general methodology is if you don't know what to do, try it on a particular one and then say, well, can I just, can I generalize this notation? Yeah, I think my problem was not uh, realizing I could just generalize the notation. Yeah. Well, that's that is what you want. That is what you want to do. So you started out the right the right way. So you, here you want to. So you want to. I'll just say. You want to generalize this to arbitrary case. All right. So I'll let you I'll let you play with that then. Uh, but that's but I think you, you follow this just follow this methodology. And you would also have to specify this m. So which which row which row is zero for this one? Don't, don't they want it to be specified that it's the, the row lowercase m? 
Well, yes, yes, okay. So that's what your that's what your m tittle will m twill will be. It will be it will be your matrix. So you'd say uh, let m tilde equal uh, m equal the matrix m and replace row little m with zeros. You need to be very specific about what what this what this matrix that has a zero row is. You have to tell me which 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 row has how, how as I said, if if you gave me the matrix big M, your description should be clear enough so that I could create this matrix with a zero row from your from from uh, big M. You need to give me a recipe on, on, uh, so that if I could take any matrix big M and perform this recipe and get the elementary matrices and get the matrix that has a zero row. So are you all are you all thoroughly intimidated now? Or <laughs> Or but okay, all right. But uh, that's but that's what I can say is go through follow. I mean this ar this argument is perfect, it's absolutely perfect. But you want to now what you want to do is the, instead of e1 inverse e2 inverse m m twiddle, use uh, specify this e1 inverse in in uh, elementary matrix notation as s s of something. This one too, and then tell me what m, tw m tilde is. And that should get it for you. Okay, well, we can talk about this more, but let's move on to the next, the next uh, problem. So you, you guys go ahead and drive. Tell me what you want to uh, look at. I don't know how far you got in your discussion section. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, it's, I mean, it's better. It's better to do it with um, with the S with, with the S R N. What was the other one? T something like that. You can even just write out explicitly um, sij of mu transpose is equal to, and then write the, what the transpose is um, explicitly. Y you get what I'm saying? All right, for instance, there, uh, for instance, uh, one of the elementary matrices is, I think there's ri of lambda. So this is problem 10. Okay. Okay. Ri of lambda, right? The, what that does is that multiplies rho i by lambda. What does it look like? It's a diagonal matrix. Yeah. A bunch of ones and then lambda right. They're very good. Okay. So what is Ri of lambda transpose? Same thing. So that's, sh that's showing you that the transpose of this elementary matrix is an elementary matrix. So you need to do the same thing for uh, Sij of lambda. And the other one. Was the other one T? I don't remember. It's just called E. Okay, 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 okay. And then this should be these should be some some elementary matrix. All right, and this should also be some elementary matrix. All right. So you see, this shows that the transpose of any elementary matrix is an elementary matrix.
No, it just says, as far as I can see, it just says uh, for part, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yes. All right. Okay, well, all right, so I, I missed a step. So you can do this, and then you can say, um, so, so then you need, and so then you just say the determinant of Ri lambda. So, so, so you can just say the determinants are equal. All right, so I, I missed a step. Sorry, I didn't read carefully. Well, I think I. I don't think you have to. If you show that it's an elementary matrix, I believe that he shows in the chapter that the determinant of this is one. And if over here you get another s, that determinant is also one. So. So if you can, if you can, if this transpose is also an elementary matrix, he's already computed for you the, the determinants of elementary matrices. So you shouldn't have to do that again from scratch. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to think about upper lower triangular at all. You just use the results that he has already about the determinant of elementary matrices. Okay, so what else are we doing? That's as far as I've gotten, so. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, it is as easy as you made it. Yes. Well, I mean, you. I think you have to be careful. You have to be a little bit careful. Uh, for instance, I know that S I J lambda. If you flip it, it's not. It is. It is not the. That is not the inverse. But in the chapter, I think it tells you what the inverses are. If you want to dig there. The other thing you can think about is each one of these matrices corresponds to a row operation. And you can think of what the inverse row operation is. Yes. I think in the chapter they do somewhere tell you what the inverses of elementary row operation matrices are. But but uh, but I think you can I think you can figure it out because. Um, you know that each elementary matrix corresponds to elementary row operation, and the in, and the inverse elementary matrix should give you the inverse elementary row operation. For for example, if I flip two rows, how do I invert that? Okay, so that tells you the elementary row operation. That elementary row operation is performed by an ma elementary matrix. So that, that elementary matrix must be the inverse of the row switch. Well, if you flip, for instance, if you flip two rows, let, let's just do a, whoops, oh, it's doing this thing again. Okay, here we go. All right, so here if I, so this is number 11. Suppose I have four by four, and I flip two rows. Uh, so this is A, and I flip row, I flip row uh, two and two and three. Right. So how do I invert that row operation? How do I get back if I flip row two and three? How do I get back to row to A? Uh, flip, flip row three and two. 
okay, which is really the same thing. Okay, now we know flipping row two and three, that's the same thing as multiplying A by something. Well, write it out this way. It's E what what? E23. E23. Okay, right. Now, if I want to switch it back again. Okay. That's right. So that's going to be E23 times E23 of A, right? So E23 times E23 of A is equal to A. So what's the inverse of E23? E23. You have E23 times E23. Yeah, because they make the identity. And that's true for any matrix, A, right? So I could multiply, that me means that uh, E23 times E23 is equal to the identity. So that means that E23 inverse equals E23. And you can kind of see, uh, I'm, and you can do the same thing for any switch rows i and j, uh, or multiply some row by constant, or multiply row by constant and add to another row. In each one of those cases, you can think, well, how do I, how would I undo that row operation, and what is the elementary matrix that corresponds to that undo? So you can think about it that way. So I, I don't know, uh, Adam, if that was easier than what you thought it was or not so easy, but I think maybe it was a little bit harder than. Yeah. Now you should write. I mean, it's it's as easy as writing these three equations. It would be good to give some indication how you found those three equations, but that's but the upshot is that's what you need. This is a mistake. This should be S I J inverse of S I J lambda of inverse. That that should have an inverse on it. Actually, this is not very good. Uh, this should be det eij inverse. It's not the deter. It's not the inverse of the determinant. It's the determinant of the inverse. Oh, you need another set of parentheses. Yes, I would need another set of parentheses. But you want to find the determinant of the inverse matrix that you found in part A. Now, if I remember right, I assigned most of the questions from this section and just a couple questions from the next section, if, that's, if I'm correct about that. Um, I think that 12 should be OK because you're just doing with 2 by 2, 3 by 3 matrices. Except I think in part C, uh, well, I suppose you're supposed to look at parts A and B and then figure out how that generalizes to n by n. And that, that the C and D may be a little bit more of a stretch. To actually prove it may be a little more of a stretch. But, but, we, but we can talk about that when you get there. Whoops, sorry. Why is it doing all this crazy stuff?
Yes. Uh, no, I think you should use. I think you should use R and S. E is generic. So I think. Uh, um, well, it says you should show this separately for each of the three types of elementary matrix. So I would I would go ahead and use the R S and E. Okay. So does that give you enough uh, food for thought? Should we? Okay. Okay. Well, I guess what we can do is we can adjourn until Tuesday. And I know a bunch of people come around Tuesday before class. I will. I will be there. If I don't 